Okay, um, let's start with uh, how you came into the Navy. I entered the Navy as a midshipman uh, on the B-7 program, later called the 90-Day Wonders. I left college, went to take a cruise. The primary reason for going was a cruise. I uh, didn't have any intention of remaining in the Navy, but took a cruise on the new uh, cruiser, the Quincy, and back, and was selected to go to Northwestern University. I went as a midshipman the 12th of uh, March, 1941, commissioned in uh, June of 41, and reported aboard the USS Raleigh as a assistant gunnery officer, and assistant uh, division officer, and all the things for training. Went aboard. How did we come into LPA? All right. I, uh, we were on convoy of duties, going back and forth to South Pacific, and I had a wife in Frisco. I knew nothing of lighter than air or anything. On one of the tours out at sunset, the TC-13 setting up flare flying on escort, SW escort for us, and he went blink, 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 and I was really interested in that blink, 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 and what he said was returning to base. The uppermost in my mind was how nice it would be to be returning to base. And about two, three days later, a dispatch came in asking for volunteers for JGs with a year or more of uh, sea experience. And I went down to do my volunteering to go to Light of the Air without any knowledge of flight pay or what they did or anything with my only input being to return to base. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually you got to Lakehurst and started free. No, I was ordered to Moffett Field. I went to Class 1 Moffett Field. Uh, and, uh, 42? In 42. And uh, was uh, awarded my wings on the 22nd of February of 43. Uh, from, took about six months. Uh, well, it took normally that, but they, uh, they put us in uh, they put us in with that group of cadets and then moved up our uh, wing ceremony to an uh, inspection on the 22nd of uh, February, and that's why we were there a shorter period of time. Well, did you do a free balloon? And free balloon? I became very interested in the free balloons at Moffett. And did not only kite balloon? What? Did no kite balloon, balloon, just the hydrogen filled uh, 35,000 foot balloons. 3519, I think we did. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we. Uh, ballooned over Santa Clara Verily, and I even had the uh, experience of uh, landing, coming to rest in the top of a redwood tree over in Big Basin National Forest, uh, over the mountains between Monterey and uh, the uh, Mountain View. So after that, you graduated the L ships? I, uh, well, actually, we were flying L ships, and they occasionally the TC-13 or TC-14. Uh, we didn't have any K ships in the program. Uh, the on completion, on the 22nd, as I say, uh, I was ordered to uh, ZP-33, which was based at Tillamook, Oregon, but I hadn't taken any ships up there yet, and they were working on the hangars and etc. And uh, we first went to a detachment in Eureka and began to fly ships out of there. And I flew then as the navigator for the captain, Captain Sullivan of ZP-33, into Tillamook as they brought in the first K-ships. There were no hangars, nothing, and it was quite... So you just had a stick mast there at Eureka? Uh, at Eureka, we had not stick, we had a mobile mast. Had a mobile mast, mast, mobile mast. And we had mobile mast at Tillamook. Did you, did you build it in a local hotel in Eureka, or...? Uh, uh, no, they built a little barrack there, and uh, we, uh, the officers and men, all had these uh, bunks in this little barrack. The weather was quite bad there, and we were moving on up, and within, oh, a few weeks, then we went on into Tillamook.
But um, Eureka continued to be a, a, a one of our uh, alternate. Alternate. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you got up to Tillamook. Got up to Tillamook, and uh, I it was an unusual situation. I was a fellow with very few hours, uh, yet was full lieutenant. Senior lieutenant. I'd made senior lieutenant on March 1st, right after coming in, and I uh, took off my first K ship. I was in my first K ship. Took it off at Tillamook. Uh, one pilot named Bill Kime. I was just assigned as his co-pilot, and we went out. And uh, it was pouring down rain. The ship was 3,000 pounds heavy, and I'd never been on the controls of a K ship. And Bill says, "Take it off, Doug." And I took that thing off, soft in, took it off down the runway, down down the runway, down a uh, little gravel thing between runways, and was muddy. And as we went further and further and further into the fog and commenced to lift off, there was a uh, a uh, graveyard in the confines of the air base, and there was one of these Washington Monument type tombstones right directly in my path, and I was heavy loaded and any movement either way, and was going to go in. And so as we continued directly on the path, the monument came right square between the uh, two engine props and disappeared into the fog as those that flew at Tilmo. had 1,200 foot precipice on one side, other side three miles lifting up, it was 3,100 feet, and it was a crooked uh, little passage into the bay, and it was always soft in the morning, and it was a little while in the afternoon that you could come in and bore down through it, but most of the time you had to come in over the water, find the entrance to the river, three rivers entering into this little bay, and you would fly down the river until you visually, it was a, uh, a snag on a tall spruce and you turned and started letting it down right then. That's the only way you made it in there. And we had one beam to come out, but it was erratic because of these high mountains around there. Did you have any near misses or suspects or uh, contacts while at Tillamook? Uh, uh, yes, I did, it. yes. Uh, quite one uh, instance, there was a, we were standby ship, and there was a report for the ship sunk coming out of Columbia River uh, by a submarine, and we proceeded immediately to make uh, take off and go up for search. Now, since of course it was proven there wasn't any ship sunk, or that it was just erroneous information, but we proceeded northward to off Astoria, and as we come into the scene, there were uh, three ships, a PC boat, and two sub chasers there, and they were coming down as we were to the area where this attack had occurred. We began search with MAD. After some 30, 40 minutes, we got an MAD contact. Smoke floats dropped, and within minutes, the PC boat confirmed the sonar contact, and then a little bit later, we got another MAD contact, and they confirmed that they had their position bearing range was right over where we had dropped the floats and we were tracking. We tracked and finally got three good movements and come around and attack. We had four bombs on board, depth charge. We dropped two of them, which was incorrect, but that's what we did anyhow. And then following this, the PC boat continued to attack the uh, area of the sub where they were getting it. Contact, but we never did get any more contacts for another couple hours, and then we got one contact. Wasn't a track with no tactics. We just got the attack, got the uh, uh, contact, and smoke float was dropped, and we come around and uh, quickly dropped our other two bombs on this contact without tracking, which was incorrect. But we were young and new pilots, <laughs> and out of this, the only thing came was the. Uh, reporting to the captain that he chewed out the command pilot for not dropping all four instead of two of the bombs.